So at this point, I mean, you have uh, your military background, uh, you've gone through Royal Canadian Mounted Police training, you've done the, the drug stuff, and then you get selected for uh, this HRT um, type of a, a unit. And how long are you with them? Are you uh, going around with them? Is this where you start going overseas or what, what's oh, going no, no, on no. during this time? It's frame? very a unit that was working in Ontario in the Grand Toronto area. So I think the further we've gone with them was in Kingston, like a two, three hour drive. Uh, yeah. So no, it wasn't, um, it wasn't overseas at all. When I started traveling overseas was, I joined a program, like, do you know what the air marshals are in, yeah. uh, in the United States? Right. So we had a very covert program, very similar to that in Canada. And this is what I joined in 2004. Nice. Um, there was, it was a brand new unit. Like we were like, buying the computers, buying the cars type of thing for that unit at a covert location in Ottawa. And I applied for it. And for the first time, I wouldn't say the first time because ERT was quite challenging, but the selection and the course to become an operator uh, with that counterterrorism unit was the most challenging course I've ever done in my life. The attrition rate for, for this one was about 75%. You start oh, wow. about 30 guys and you finish seven, eight or nine if you're lucky. Um, because every, and why, why is that? Um, is it, uh, cause our air marshal program, I know that the, uh, the course of fire for selection that they have, and it might've changed since I shot it. It's been 10 years, maybe a little bit longer since I shot that course of fire, but it's challenging. Like I remember it being legit. Yeah. Uh, and it, is, is that one of the things that you guys do, do as part of that program as well? Yes, it is. It's very, very similar. You know, you probably from also position, you, you draw, you need to fire within 1.25 second. Your first shot has to be on target. You cannot miss, there's, I think it's on a 150 point and you can't not lose more than five point. If not, you're disqualified. If you're disqualified twice, you're home. But the shooting, you shoot so much that you get better at this. I would say no more than out of everybody that quits, about 25% do it because of the, of the challenge of the course of fire. Most of the other, they, they, they fail on the scenario because the scenarios mm. are challenging. Uh, you learn how to, uh, what to do when there's a bomb in a aircraft. Where do you place it? How do you deal with it? If it's a mercury switch, if it's a dead man switch, how do you need to take the terrorists down in the most effective manner quickly to save the life of the passengers? And then there's different scenarios like, what do you do when you can't save everybody? And now the aircraft has been taken and is being, is being fly as a weapon. You've lost the fight inside the airplane. What do you do to take the control wow. of the cockpit now? So those are all scenarios that uh, you need to be quick thinking. Uh, the DS are always there watching and they don't give you any chances whatsoever. And what's very, very difficult about that is you never know if you do things. They teach you what to do, um, but at the end, you don't know if you pass or if you fail. You just keep going, keep going. You don't know where you stand. Uh, and a lot of people just, they, they, they just can't take it. So, uh, so they Wow, I think they might have got that. Like SAS is kind of, it was like that. Uh, our, our Delta selection I've heard is similar to that. We just don't, you don't know. Um, what pistols are you guys using? Uh, Nine millimeter you? Smith and Wesson pistol, but... Huh. There's a variation to it that I can't talk about, but there's a variation to it that make it uh, more efficient. And how, how long did you do that, that program? So you graduate that, that program, and then are you uh, with this air marshal unit for a certain amount of time, and that's your, your focus for the next few years? Yeah, it's my focus until 2008. And it was, I think, the best job I had with the RCMP. Uh, we train with the Israelis. We train with the French GGN, which I'm the group yeah, yeah. who they are. That's great. So we Amazing. all work together to improve our tactics, our shooting, our tacticals. Uh, because, of course, uh, in my unit, there was, of course, that the flying, there was time being spent inside the plane, but there's always stuff you need to do at the airport. There's always investigation and surveillance that you need to do on, on people that are of interest to law enforcement. Um, so that was super challenging. It was a lot of fun. So I did that for, for eight years, but eight years. Wow. And you have to quali re qualify every for four years for four years. I said that to, until 2008, I did that for four years. And okay. yes, you need to requalify every six months, every six months, because the bad guys progress too. They don't sit on their tongue doing nothing. They learn about the tactics. They try to infiltrate our units and try to see what, how we will react if they do this, if they do that. So we need to improve our tactics too. And that's why training 
with our overseas partner is so important because the French want to tell us something that's, oh my God, you know what? We never had that type of scenario happen in real life. Thank you for sharing this. We will improve our tactics yeah. to, to, uh, to match that type of offense. Um, so it was really, really fun. But at the same time, being deployed for four years straight overseas, spending time in the Middle East and Europe and the United States, it becomes taxing on the family. Mm -hmm. um, I have two, I had two kids, both were born, one in 2005, the other in 2007. My wife had a business that was booming at the time. And here I was like overseas for two weeks in a row, back for a week, boom, gone again. It was, it was very difficult. Yeah, you're just having fun out there. You're just playing. You get to go. Yeah. <laughs> and the bunch of guys and girls I was with was there's some of them are still my best friends right now. I mean, awesome. we, we, you become very, very tight in that type of unit, like I'm sure you know. Um, and uh, yeah, it was it was hard to leave, but at the same time, uh, my wife and I was we always have a very honest conversation about say, you know what, I need help at home. Uh I understand what you do is important, but I think you did your part. Is there any is there something else in the RCMP that you could do that's going to give us the satisfaction of what you're doing or what you're accomplishing right now? And I said, of course. That's the beauty about the RCMP compared to other police forces. There are so many options in front of you uh, that that you can go.